Good morning, everyone. Let's begin by giving charity. Charity saves God, protect all of our soldiers, protect them from the enemies, from without and from within. And tzedakah tatzel mimovis, and tzedakah will bring the geula, v'shavah the tzedakah, charity. But now, let us... There we go. Good. Huh? Maybe we'll take this off here. That. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Here we go. Good. Okay. Stop the court. Here we go. All right, we're continuing what we began yesterday. What did we begin yesterday? We began yesterday learning about learning about learning about uh, 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 Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is called Shabbat Shabbaton. It's called the Sabbath. Didn't start recording yet. What? We didn't start recording. Are you sure? Oh, oh, you did. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So, so what are we learning? We're learning about, about Shabbat. Now, what we're learning from is a book which is called Lakuti Torah, and this is the wisdom of the first Rebbe of Chabad. So, the first Rebbe of Chabad is telling us like this: that there is a special day in Judaism, and it's called Yom Kippur, and Yom Kippur is called Shabbat Shabbaton. It's called a double Shabbat. Double Shabbat. Now, all the holidays in Judaism, they're like, like a, the, the word in English, holy days. They're holy days. In, in Hebrew, they're not called holy days, but basically it's the same thing. They're called Yom Tov. They're called good days. Good means that they're shining some sort of a spiritual light. That's what good is. Like it says in the first day of creation, that God created light and he saw the light was good. So light is good. And what light means, it's it's a, a, a certain revelation of reality. Reality. They're just physical, physically speaking, a person can be, let's say, in a room, wakes up in a room, and it's totally black, totally dark there. It doesn't, so he doesn't know where anything is. He's groping around on the ground. And he's afraid, you know, he doesn't, who knows what's going to be there. Maybe there's wild animals. Maybe there's a big hole there. Maybe there's some sort of a, 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 a bomb he can set off or the, the, who knows? He doesn't know where he is. So what's, you know, what, what's, how do you say, be, be, be safe and, and, sh and secure. He stays in one place. He stays in his comfort zone and he's just there. But he starts to get hungry. He starts to get thirsty. He's in a dark room. He starts to get, and he starts to get lonely. He's lonely and he's just afraid. He yells out, help me. And then he starts to worry. Maybe I shouldn't yell out. Maybe it'll wake up some wild animal that's in the corner or something. He doesn't, has no idea. And he's hungry. Suddenly, somebody turns on the lights. Somebody turns on the lights. Now, turning on the lights, he didn't add anything to the room. And suddenly, he, he sees that there's all of his friends are there and they say, surprise, it's a party. And there's all this food and all these drinks. And everything and all the dangers go away. So all of a sudden, his fear <clears throat> goes away. He's, 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 his uncertainty goes away. And suddenly he's he's he realizes that what he needs is right in front of him, but he didn't see it because there was no light. Well, the same thing is in, in the world. Really, God is creating us, God really cares about us. God really will provide for all of our needs. He has certain things that we have to do in order to be his partners. But the, the, the basic reality is, is that everything that's here is a big gift and that God is infinitely good. And we don't see it. We don't feel it. We have no idea what God is. What God is a person. What, what, what is he, a big angel? Is it a big this? He says, no, no, if you think that, that's idolatry. But you can't blame a person for, for doing idolatry because he doesn't know any better. He's in dark. Right? Everything is dark. He's, he's in, all he feels is himself. 
<clears throat> and and he, he sees that people live, people die. The future is uncertain. So he's all worried. That's it. So light is something that makes you less worried about the future. You know that you are not the only existence that God, in fact, is creating you. And that God is providing for you. And that God loves you. And that God is giving you life. And God is doing all these things. So you just have to be partners with that God. That's called, that's called turning on the lights. That's called turning on the lights. So all of the holidays in Judaism are different revelations. Yom Tov, Tov means light. There's different revelations of the awareness of the creator and how good the creator is and how powerful the creator is and how merciful the creator is, how happy it is to be connected to the creator. Okay, then we got a holiday which is called Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is a different holiday than all the others. But all the other holidays are telling us how to serve the creator, how to appreciate the creator, how to connect to the creator, how to be happy with the creator. Right? That God has given us everything, and he wants us to respond. He wants us to be his partners. Okay, what if you didn't, <clears throat> you ignored all this on purpose, and you didn't do any of the things that God requires? Nothing whatsoever. He gave you everything, and you gave him nothing. You gave him nothing. Now what do you do? Now what are you going to do? All the holidays in the world aren't going to help you. All the revelations in the world aren't going to help you. You know, what's going to be now? You can re reveal everything you want, but it's not going to help. Right? Everything you want. <clears throat> so what, what's there? So there's a holiday which is called Yom Kippur. And this holiday, Yom Kippur, means that even if you did all the sins in the world, there's a day that comes and forgives. Okay, now it's not that, how do you say, that uh, the, the total. There are certain sins that Yom Kippur does not have an effect on. Okay, it does not have an effect on. But let's say for our purposes, for our purposes, it does. Let's say it has an effect on all the sins. I mean, if, if, if it can, every sin basically is the same. Because what is a sin? It means you're going against God. It means you're, you're rebelling against the king. That's really, that's the essence of what a, a, a sin is, right? A sin is, the, the, the action of the sin is not as bad in one way. It's not as bad as the attitude of the sin. The attitude of the sin. You are rebelling against God, or you don't care about God. You don't care about God, or you care more about yourself, or whatever. Anyway, no, if you did purposely sins, you went against God, all the holidays in the world are not going to help you, Right? It gives you more light. It gives you more revelation. The more light, the better. That gives me more of a chance to sin. Right? It gives me a pleasure to know how great God is so I can go against him. And you can. God made it. You can go against him. So what happens, what happens to a person like that, that he has done all these terrible things, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's it. He's just, he's just, you know, outside the camp. He's just, you know, not in the club. God wants nothing to do with him. This is not, it's not so. There's a holiday called Yom Kippur. And this holiday called Yom Kippur is God forgives automatically everybody. God forgives. Especially here we're talking about the Jews. Right? Here we're talking about the Jews. God forgives the Jews automatically. Automatic forgiveness. How can this possibly be? We're talking about this more in the, what we're learning from the, from the Rebbe. We have a Sicha, what speech of the Rebbe. Remember we're learning about that. The one that we're learning in Yiddish, but it would okay. Here, the Rebbe is this is from the first Rebbe of Chabad. This is about 250 years earlier. There are seven Rebbe's in Chabad, so we're learning from the first one and from the seventh one. Okay, so here's this holiday called Yom Kippur. So, Yom Kippur is called the Sabbath of Sabbaths, it's called the Sabbath of Sabbaths, Shabbat Shabbaton. Shabbat Shabbaton. Because it's Shabbat Shabbaton, so therefore it forgives all sins. What's what's the connection between them? Okay, so the Rebbe explained yesterday, we learned. What exactly is Shabbat? What is Shabbat? <clears throat> oh, by the way, we learned that Yom Kippur, sometimes it's called feminine and sometimes it's called masculine. Remember learning that? Shabbat Shabbaton. Who? Shabbat Shabbaton. He. Who is masculine and he is feminine. Okay, so the Rebbe said, what is the idea of Shabbat? In general, the Jewish people have Shabbat. Now, by the way, non-Jews are not supposed to keep Shabbat. Not to the, the Ten Commandments really are only for the Jews. But the Jews themselves are for the whole world. 
The Jews are here as public servants. We're servants of all mankind. That's what the Jews are. But there's certain commandments. In fact, most of the commandments, well, really when it comes down to it, all the commandments are only for the Jews. Only for the Jews. There's some that are repeated also for the non-Jews, the seven Noahide commandments. The, 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 those are the prohibitions. And then there's, they say there's 30, 30 um, and the, the, uh, the, the commands that you're supposed to do. Non-Jews are also supposed to do to pray, to give charity. Okay, maybe we'll talk about that in a different class. <clears throat> but here we're talking about the Jewish people, the Jewish people, only they are supposed to keep Shabbat. Only they are supposed to keep Shabbat. <clears throat> what is Shabbat? <clears throat> the word Shabbat means to return. Shub, to return. It says the whole rest of the week, God creates. Right? God created the world in seven days. And God could have created the world in one instant. And, and, and even more. When God created the world, he created time. It didn't have to take God seven days. God created the whole idea of days. That's also a creation. We've talked about this before. What was there before the world was created? There's no such thing. Before the world was created, there was no time. There was no before. There was no after. There was no... Now we have no conception of what this could possibly be. But that's the fact. <clears throat> right, so, that, so when God created the world, he created time as well. You know, some people say it can't be that he created the world in seven days. It had to take seven billion years or seven million years, trillion years. Seven billion is a time warp. Is it this? I mean, that is really ridiculous when it comes down to ridiculous. Because when God created the world, he created time. Created time. Why did he create a time in, in such a pattern like that? That every minute has 60 seconds and every hour has 12, every uh, the, 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 the hour has 60 minutes, Right. And every day has 12 hours. Why did God create the world in such a way? And every week has seven. This goes according to Kabbalistic principles, which are <clears throat> listed, enumerated in a book, which is called Sefer Yetzira, the Book of Formation. So this, everything in the world is a miracle, but everything in the world is also in a pattern. <clears throat> and a pattern. And there are some really great people like the Arizal that understand what this pattern is. And there's a lot of big fakers in the world that don't understand and they make up their own pattern. And then there's a lot of people in the middle <clears throat> that, like me, that realize that I don't really know what's going on. But I trust the Rebbe's of Chabad and the Ariza and these other people that they do know what's going on. And that's what they're telling us, that the world is being created from nothing every instant. And it's being created according to a pattern. Okay, so six days God created the world. Six days God created the world. On the seventh day God rested. Six days were God, so to speak, going out of his unity, so to speak, I say, because nothing went outside of God's unity, because God is creating everything all the time. <clears throat> like I say, time is not a real entity. It is a creation. That makes it a real entity, but the fact is it's still a creation. Okay, so the seventh day of creation, that everything, it's called Shabbat. Everything returns back to its source. And the Rebbe gives an example like, Two people that are standing back to back, they're infinitely far from each other. But when they turn face to face, then that's called return. They're turning. Same thing as on Shabbat. On the rest of the week, God is, and so to speak, turning away from his oneness. He's creating us and we. He's creating us to appear and feel far away from him. And Shabbat, God turns to us and we turn to him. Right, okay, which one comes first? It's, it's a, how do you say, a, 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 a mutual relationship. God inspires us, so God always comes first. I mean, I, I, God's always going to come first because God creates us. God is the creator. <clears throat> but nevertheless, God depends, so to speak, on our returning his energy. That gives God pleasure. <clears throat> okay, so we're, we're, we're talking about here what Shabbat is. Shabbat is a special relationship with God when we return to God and God, so to speak, turns his face to us. That Shabbat means to return. Huh? Return. So it says this level of Shabbat God gave to the Jews alone because the Jews rose up in God's thought. Like it says, Ata nefachtabi. 
like it says, when God created the first man, the first man was supposed to be a Jew. <clears throat> a Jew is just a person that all he really desires, all his real identity is just to serve God, is to do what God wants. Uman <clears throat> it says that God blew into Adam. He blew a soul. He created man, a living being like everything else, like all the animals. And then he, he, he in addition to that, he, he created man from speech. And in addition to that, he blew into his soul. Breath is the source of speech. So it says, man, <clears throat> it says, man, but you have to know that you come from iron, from nothing. This is the level of iron, which that's what's called the source of Chachma. Like it says, Chachma comes from nowhere. It's a sentence of Job. Okay, so the Jewish people come from this level, which is called iron. It's the source of of the source, of the source of creation. This level of Yisrael, that's the Jewish people. Remember we said before, Yeshar El, straight to El, the, the name El is the first of the 13 attributes of mercy, remember? remember? Anyway, the Jewish people are different from everybody else. Jewish people, Kavua Me'od, they're infinitely higher from any sort of connecting to the world. Lochen, <coughs> therefore, Neymar, it says, Shamru b'nei Yisrael at the Shabbat. The Jewish people, they keep the Shabbat. Let me make this bigger over here. Oh. Therefore, it says, the Jewish people, they keep the Shabbat. Nit Kadesh, b'kedushato, that they become holy in God's holiness. Now, again, holy does not mean that God has nothing to do with the world. Holy means it just revealed that God creates the world, but God himself is infinitely, infinitely higher than the world, which makes the world infinitely, infinitely important. God does not have to create the world, but he does create the world, and he creates the world personally from his essence. If so, the world suddenly becomes very important to God. That importance, that's what's called holiness. That's a revelation of God. That's a revelation. That's why God gave the Torah. Everything is being created by God, but the Torah is given to tell us which things reveal him and which things conceal him and what is forbidden to do and what's not forbidden to do. Right? If everything is God, so what's wrong with, you know, killing people and, you know, just eating whatever you want to and stealing and just do whatever you want to. Everything is just God. Right? Everything is God. So you got a good point. That's a good point. But that's why God gave the Torah to tell us that our way of looking at things is not the way he looks at things. And our value system is not the same as God's value system. And on Shabbat, everything goes back to God's value system. It goes back to what God, you feel that there's a creator, that there's a king of the universe. Shabbat means to return. That's why it says there's a Shabbat to God. Now, again, we're talking about this because we're talking about Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur is called a double Shabbat, Shabbat Shabbaton. And it says Shabbat is the special day, Beni U Bain Ben Israel is between me and the Jewish people, Oti. <clears throat> so if you a non-Jew, he wants to keep Shabbat, he wants to keep Shabbat. So that's basically saying, I'm the boss, not God. God says only Jews should keep the Shabbat. And a person would say, Well, I don't like that. What type of that, that that's 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 bigotry? What type of chauvinism is this? What do you mean only Jews can keep the Shabbat? What is that? He says, I'll tell you what it is. It's God's will. That's what God decided. Well, I don't want what God decided. If you don't want what God decided, you have a lot of company. You have at least eight and a half billion people that feel exactly the same way. So, you know, welcome to the club. You don't want to do what God wants. You know, feel at home. That's what it is. But doing what God does want, that gives purpose to the world. It gives purpose to reality. And it gives purpose to everybody's life. You feel that every moment of your life is very, very important. I am being created by the Creator. Okay, to to uh, how do you say to uh, internalize this in a way that doesn't paralyze you? Right, I'm being created. Well, uh, that means that I can't do anything I want. Exactly the opposite. God is creating you. You can do anything you want. Anything you want. Of course, within right, you can't jump. You know. 15 feet in the air without a, you know, a, a, a pole vault or something. <clears throat> you can't lift up uh, you know, the Empire, Empire State Building on your own. There's limits, natural limits <clears throat> in the world. Okay, but except for that, anything you want to, to do, 
Now, with only your own, free, your own free will, God is saying, do me a favor, do what I want you to do. That's why I created man. Do what I want. That's why Shabbat is supposed to be a sign to the whole world that there's a creator and that the Jewish people were assigned the purpose to educate the world that there's a creator and that every, and the creator loves everyone. Everyone is important. That's the job of the Jews. And this is what Shabbat is. That's what in six days you should work. That's what it means, Chitzonius. That means the external aspect of God, creating the world. Today, in order, Parnasato, and so also we should work six days in order for make our life to, 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 for a livelihood. That's what God wants us to work. And then the seventh day is a Shabbat for Hashem. Now, also a person can say, listen, God creates everything. And God creates the birds, and he feeds the birds, right? He feeds the birds, so he's going to feed me too. So I'm not going to do anything, anything whatsoever. And what about money? No money, you know, communist system, and everything is free, and God will provide for everyone, just like the birds. Well, that's wrong. That's wrong, and it's also stupid. But a lot of people believe it. <clears throat> the, 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 let us just, no, God says six days, right? Six days you should work. <clears throat> At the six days you're supposed to work. And God says you're not supposed to steal. There's property. God wants you to have property. God wants you to have a house. He wants to have a, a wife and children. He wants to be pro prosperous and be rich. That's what God wants. Like God wants, basically, you can say God wants a capitalistic society where everybody's an individual. And people are not lumped together as just big nothings walking around with no personalities. God wants everyone to be individual. But Shabbat is the day when we realize that it's God that wants it. God is the creator. It's the creator's day. So therefore it says that seventh day, that's a Shabbat for Hashem. The Yod Mit'aleh, to go, everything goes back to its source. Now again, only Jews are supposed to keep the Shabbat. If you decide, I got a good idea, it says in the Bible, Ten Commandments, I'm supposed to keep the Shabbat, I'm going to keep the Shabbat. A non-Jew is not allowed to keep the Shabbat, even to make another day for Shabbat. I mean, it doesn't say in the Torah which day is the seventh day. Maybe we just count any, you know, any day you want. And it doesn't say you have to keep it every Shabbat. It just says one time. Right? That's why the rabbis have to come and explain it. But they did explain it. And because they explained it, so it comes clear that Shabbat is only for the Jews. A non-Jew, if he wants to drive his car, he wants to light lights, wants to do everything, he can do anything that he wants to within the seven the white commandments. So, but, but, but to, to give thanks to God and be connected to God, that's the, the, the and he wants to, the, 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 the uniqueness of every human being. That's what makes a human being a human being. That he can, from his own free will, every moment of his life, be connected to God. But you have to do it according to how the Torah says. So that's the idea of Shabbat. Shabbat comes and tells us that there's a God Six days, you think about yourself. <coughs> you work for what you need. That's what it says in the Ten Commandments. But on the seventh day is Shabbat for God. Liot mitale, to be elevated in its source of everything. Again, Jews only. It says that there's a big punishment for a non-Jew that keeps the Shabbat. They're not supposed to keep Shabbat. According to some opinions, they're not allowed to take a day of even rest. You know, even rest. I think it was Henry Ford or someone, he decided, he realized that if you give a person a day of rest, that they work better. So maybe in that case, it's okay. I don't know. I don't know. I, I really never <clears throat> delved too deeply in the seven Noahide commandments. The fact is, I never really delved deeply. And I wanted to, and I asked the letters of the Rebbe a lot of times, and he, the letters always discourage me. So I don't know that much about it, but I do know the basics, what it says in, in Maimonides. That's what it says on the seventh day. On the seventh day is a, is a, is a, a resting day, a return to God. That it goes into its source of everything. The batel to be totally negated to God. In other words, we realizing that God is creating me. Huh? That's what it means. That's what it means for turning our face to God's face, namely, Revealing the inside of the soul, the inside of the arousal of the heart to be surrendered to God, which that's the fact. Okay, what's this got to do with Yom Kippur? Here we go, listen. Ah, but, you know, as all the rabbis say, that if you want to appreciate the Shabbat, 
if you really want to appreciate the Shabbat, if you really want to appreciate the Shabbat, is you have to do something as well. One who works Arab Shabbat will eat on Shabbat. When Shabbat comes along, it's a mitzvah to eat a nice meal, that to eat three nice meals, to eat three nice meals, how are we going to get the meals? The Lord will give it. No, nah, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Why not? Because God said you should work for six days. God wants you to work. That's what he wants. So if you prepare for Shabbat, you'll have what to eat on Shabbat. You prepare for Shabbat, you're going to have what to eat on Shabbat. If you just come home on Shabbat, say, greetings, every, everyone. Where, where is everyone? Where is everyone? I, they, they went out to eat, right? The wife leaves a message. We went to my mother's house to eat. I want to come. I want God to give us everything. The Lord provides everything for everybody. It says, yeah, let him provide for you. Meanwhile, it says that you're supposed to work Arab Shabbat. And if you work Arab Shabbat and prepare the food, you'll have what to eat. So all of a sudden, Shabbat is not so spiritual and wonderful and holy and godly and everything like that. All of a sudden, I got to work. I got to I got I got to go in the kitchen and boil things and cook things and cut up fish and stuff like that. And it's so smelly. And the, the onions. And my eyes burn. And the Shabbos is no fun. It says, well, you God. The whole purpose of Shabbat is to do what God wants, and God wants you to work in order to prepare for the Shabbat. That's what He wants. Okay, and therefore, okay, it's, therefore, it says, Veshomu ben Yisrael, the Shabbat. Therefore, it says, the Jewish people, they keep the Shabbat. Lasot. What does it mean? We just finished saying that God is, is, the Shabbat is God's day. And now we're saying, no, that we have to prepare for it. We have to keep it. Kolom, in other words, she yishmur michul the Shabbat, that we have to, <coughs> that is say, the keep, we have to <coughs> preserve from the weekdays to Shabbat. True, Shabbat, God God does everything. God does everything. But if you didn't prepare food for Shabbat, God said, that I'm not going to give you. I'm not going to give you. But you have to work. Gam also, and Ba'atzmo, you have to fix yourself up. Not just to fix up your food and your house, but to fix up your soul. What does that mean? <clears throat> preparations, soul preparations. And your soul, you have to make the Shabbat. Liot and the emet, she had the emet came that it should really be. In other words, not just that you read what it says in the books and you act accordingly. No, take it to heart. Take it to heart. Say, listen, Shabbat's wonderful. You know, you eat a nice meal and you rest. You don't eat, and so that's what I'll do. Says, so listen, that's physically good. You're doing very good physically, but what about spiritually? What about spiritually? What am I supposed to do spiritually? Oh. Now we're going to see. Shabbat is a day which is holy. Therefore, you have to make the Shabbat in your soul in every day of the week. How? By means of prayer, tefillah. Tihine, behold, betikunim in tikuni zohar. Omer says, ki tefillah is a sulam mutzav arza perosho megina shemaim. By Jacob, it says there was Jacob's ladder, and he saw a uh, a ladder, a ladder standing on the ground, and his head was reaching to heaven. What is this? So it says, this ladder of Jacob, this is prayer. The prayer we do. Now, we Jewish people, religious Jewish people, <clears throat> we pray three times a day. Pray three times a day. What's the idea of prayer? I think we remember, we learned this speech, remember of tefillah, tzedakah, and tshuva, tshuva, tzedakah. Remember, learn the a sicha of the Rebbe, that by Jews, prayer is a different thing. Prayer is a different thing. By the whole rest of the world, prayer is you're asking God for something. You're asking God for something. You pray, please God, give me food. Please God, give me what you're supposed to do. That's good. You're supposed to pray for everything there is. But, but Jews have an additional thing with prayer, is not asking God for things. God, give me things, but to give me to God. Give myself to God. What do you mean give yourself to God? Take a simple example. You start off praying and say, I'm a creation. God is creating me. Do I feel this? No. Do I feel it? No, I don't feel it. No, I don't feel it. Think about it. What's there to think about? I don't feel it. Oh. The reason you don't feel it 
is because you only feel yourself. <clears throat> if you're being created every instant by God, then let's say you don't feel you're being created, but at least get the idea that what you do feel is not the whole truth. I feel that I'm just here. That's right. But how did you get here? How are you being here every moment? It says in this book of Hasidu, it's over here, that God is creating you. Do you feel this? It must mean that God is infinitely more real than I am. But, so what is this guy? God is like a person. He's like a thing. I mean, this, is, this doesn't make any sense. So, oh, now you're starting to get it. That's the point. God is creating you. It doesn't make any sense, but it's true. So what is standing between you and God is your sense. Your sense. You don't feel it. You don't understand it. And therefore, it doesn't exist. Right? And that is a mistake. So now you have to start to feel that there's a creator. That's what Shabbat is. You have to start to feel the creator. So what do you do? Here, look at the Psalms of King David. King David felt it. You can see in every word of his Psalms that he felt that God is really real. And God is not a separate being from me. On the other hand, God is, yes, sort of separate. I mean, he's praying to God like you talk to a person. So now it starts to really get complicated. I mean, God is really infinite. Is he finite? Who am I praying to? Who am I talking to? Oh, start, start to think about it. Once you start to think about it, you start to feel that God is more real than I am. And my reality comes from God. Then you're preparing yourself for Shabbat. That's the ladder that Jacob saw. The Jacob's ladder, it says there was a ladder that was standing on the ground and its head was reaching to the heavens and angels of God were going up and coming down. How, the angels of God should come down first. It says the angels of God were going up and coming down. What do you mean they were going up? The, the, the angels of God were coming down. Angels come from heaven, right? They come down and then they go up. But in the, in the Bible, it doesn't say that. It says that the angels were coming, first of all, the angels were going up as though the angels were down here in the world. First they go up, Olim, and then the angels come down. What type of angels are those? Says the Rebbe, the Malachi, these angels are the commandments. The commandments, they are angels. Shluchi de Malcha. The word for angel is also the same word as a emissary, a messenger. A Malach is also the word for an emissary. The commandments are emissaries of God. They're messengers of God. God put the commandments in the world as messengers to the world that there is a creator, and there is a commander, there is a king. That's what the commandments are. That's why it's such an evil thing. These people or whatever religions that stand up and say the Jews don't have to do commandments anymore. They don't have to do commandments. That is destroying the whole world. That's destroying the whole world. We're taking over now. The Jews don't have to do commandments. Now there's a new dispensation, a new Bible, a new Testament, a new this, this, right? Jews don't have to do commandments. This is pure destructive, pure evil. The angels of God, they go up. Those are the commandments. Like it says in the Tanchuma, in the Midrash, Vayigash, you should honor the commandments because the commandments are my emissaries. <clears throat> and they are the, the, the emissaries of the king. And the emissary of a person is like that person. Right? Someone, okay, emissary of the king comes, says proclamation for the honor for the king. Right? Everybody's afraid of the power of that person. He knows this person is the emissary of the king. But his majesty, majesty sent me. And that's what, the, that's what the commandments are. The commandments are <clears throat> emissaries of God, the creator, the commander. But the source of the commandments, these are what's called the limbs of God. <clears throat> that's another one of the means when it says that we are made in God's image, that we have the ability to do the commandments, which the commandments are limbs of God. Something like limbs of a body, mispashat and neshama, that the soul goes into the limbs in order to make them move, also by means of the commandments. There is drawn the soul of God, so to speak, godliness, into the world. 
And this elevates them above. And that's by means of prayer. So the commandments, those are limbs of God. Those are like the angels. And when we pray and we think about God and we connect our soul to the creator and our hearts and our emotions to the fact that there's a creator, this brings the commandments up. It elevates the commandments. Elevates the commandments. What, what, what are the commandments? We said the commandments are like the limbs of God, the limbs of God. You have a limb, right? You have a hand. Your hand moves, right? We have no idea what an amazing miracle is <clears throat> that your hand moves. God forbid you ever see a person that's paralyzed. He's got a hand and he can't move it, right? And he just doesn't, no matter what he does, no matter how he tries, he can't move it. He's just trying to move it. He can't move it. And when you can move your hand, it's such an amazing miracle. Why? Because your soul is having an effect on your body. That's a big miracle. Well, that's the same thing as the commandments. What are the commandments? Is that your soul is having an effect on the body. Your soul, which is God, is having an effect. One second. Mosquitoes. <clears throat> that your, your soul, the, 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 the creator, is having an actual effect on the world. That's the commandments. The commandments are made from physical things. <clears throat> And again, only Judaism has commandments. There's no other religion that has commandments. All the other religions or beliefs or whatever you want to call them, right? <clears throat> I mean, groups and the practices and, and the this, they, they have the, the, the rituals and they have their 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 customs and they, whatever, but they don't have commandments directly from God. Commandments are exactly the will of God in physical things. <clears throat> That's what they are. Those are the angels of God sent down to the world. And we send them up. That's what it says, the angels of Jacob. They went up first. You saw the angels going up and coming down. Going up, that's by means of prayer. Prayer means that we arouse our heart to start to appreciate and to love and to be in awe of our Creator. This is all talking about Shabbat. Shabbat is the day when everything elevates. And every, every day of the six days of the week, the Shabbat of that day is the prayers of that day. Everything goes back to its source. Let's explain this. The rabbis say before every commandment, you're supposed to say a, a, a blessing. God, you made us holy with your commandments. By means of the commandments, mit'alim, we elevate ourselves, we rise up, the Kodesh Elyon, into what's called the upper holiness. Asher Tirishanu, the God made us holy with this command. And the word Kiddushim is also means to get married. To get married. When we do a commandment, that is like getting married to the Creator. We're the bride, and God is the groom. Kiddushim. We do a commandment, we link ourselves, unify ourselves, with the creator. That's the word mitzvah. The word mitzvah, commandment, means connection. So before we do a commandment, we say, that God, you made us holy with your commandments. That by means of the commandments, we elevate in the upper holiness. Now, I just want to say one a small, small thing. I think I told you this maybe a, a thousand times already. But since the, this war, this crazy war began in Israel, so every day I go to a local hospital, and I, outside of the hospital, there's a waiting room, and there's a little park over there, and there's, anyway, so I go there, and I ask people, to, men to put on tefillin, Jewish men to put on tefillin, and they put on, and a lot of the Jewish men that put on tefillin are not religious. And when you see people put on tefillin, I don't know if you've ever seen, you can look it up, there's a box on your arm, which is by a strap, and there's a, a, a box in the head, which is also connected by a strap. <clears throat> All the people that put on tefillin, not one of them goes into like some sort of ecstasy, and his eyes roll up, and he becomes like tremendously, you know, uh, how do you say, uh, like a, uh, what do they call it? Uh, there's a good word for it. Uh, um, anyway, like some sort of a zombie or something, like, you know, if you go, a religious person should do. You know, he puts on tefillin, he goes, uh, like that. No, the people put on the, they put on the fill in and you see that it's a thing that 
in a way it enlivens them. It enlivens them. They read Shema Yisrael. It, it's like a happy thing. It's a happy thing. But once in a while a person puts on tefillin and they cry because they haven't put on for a long time. Well, but that's rare. That's very rare. I mean, I have to say, honestly, it, it, I mean, I, I go every day. So I've been going, this is almost for a year. So I go five times a week. And this is like almost, let's say 50 years. So it's like 250 times I've gone. Every time I put on five, put on two. so let's say there's a thousand people I put on, tefillin. not one of them cried. Not one of them cried. All of them are happy. All of them are put on. And a lot of them, they don't even know how to put on tefillin. Not religious people. What I'm trying to say is putting on tefillin is a very religious act. It's a very, and people do it in public. Non-religious people, they have no qualms about doing it because you see that it's not a religious act. The fact is it's not religious. It's Jewish. It's reality. Somehow or other, the people feel that this is real. I, to tell you the truth, I have absolutely no idea how this works. I have no idea how it works. God gave us a commandment what this means. It's totally incomprehensible. It doesn't make any sense. But really, nothing makes any sense. I mean, God is creating us every moment. That God is this. And Jews want to do the commandments. It's the, it's the most amazing thing. And like I say, it's not a thing that takes them out of you know, reality and they, they alters their consciousness or they become enlightened or something like that. No, it's the most mundane thing <laughs> that you could, I mean, that you could possibly imagine. You know, it's like talking to a friend, like talking to a friend. Same, same thing. But you, they just feel that God is their friend. God is not like some being or some, you know, religious figure from the Iliad and Odyssey or something. So it's that's what the commandments are. The commandments are God, and God is life. God is reality. God wants us to be individuals. That's what the commandments are. That's what it means. He Kasiv, it says, Anika Broshwanan. That's what it says. I am, God says, I am like a, a, a young cedar tree. Anika Broshwanan. I think this is a sentence in Psalms, huh? Anika Broshwanan. I'm almost sure that it is. A sentence in Psalms. One second. Here we go. Here we go. Let me take the best. Where is this? This is page, page, page. I'm going to look this up. Anika Broshwanan. I said it before and I forgot where it's from. Here we go. Ready? Son of S. Son of S. Here we go. So I need Broshwanan. Here we go. Ready? I need. Oh, it is. It's Hosea. It comes from Hosea. It's a it's a part of the prophet Hosea, the 14, 9. Hosea. I am brush. What does it mean? I am like a young cedar tree. And that's the commandments. The commandments are like a young cedar tree. That's what the commandments are, right? It says, Ani Kabrosh Ranan. Of a young cedar tree, <clears throat> if it's like it can grow tremendously high, they're very thin, it grows very high. And if you can figure out some sort of way to bend it over, bend it over, so you bend it over to the to get to the ground, and then let's say you tie it down, you put a rock on the top of it, and you cut where it's tied down, and it shoots itself up, shoots up, right? And it can throw this rock tremendous distances. Says that's what it means. I am when you bend it down below, because it's very, very high, the highest of the trees. When you put something on it, like a stone, and you bend this tree below, when it you release it and it goes back to its original source, it throws this thing to a place very, very high or very distant. And that's also the same thing as <clears throat> Ani, that's the commandments. God makes himself come very down, very low, like a young cedar tree, very low. But when a Jew does it, is it shoots him up very high. And this is what we're going to continue learning tomorrow. Tomorrow. And now let us do the Sikha that we started. Speech was a start to share. Speech by the Lubavitcher.